What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We're here in Benel, Florida at Kelly and I's new deer lease. Y'all have all seen Dalton before. He's not the most camera friendly person in the world, but he is one of the most friendly people you'll ever meet. Check out my feet. Y'all get ready to laugh because I'm about to take you on a hog hunt that's going to have an unexpected ending. And when we get done with that, we're going to come right over here and cut this swamp cabbage that I'm going to take home with me to Stuart. My mom's going to come up and show me a recipe that my grandpa and probably his grandpa have cooked their whole entire life. It's like history of my family, history of South Florida, swamp cabbage. Look it up, study it. They're everywhere here in Florida and amazing to eat. And once we get done cutting that, I want to go over why we cut them, especially out here in these beautiful cow pastures because they actually need to be cut. Now, don't worry. We're going to be right back to the show like we always do. But first, I want to tell you about home. Hone is an easy at home assessment test for low testosterone. Now 30 million men in the United States alone have low testosterone. Now I do have problems saying the word low testosterone, but I don't have a problem telling you guys that I'm 41 years old and I think I'm starting to feel the effects of low testosterone as well. It's really nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean. Almost every guy I know that's my age has at one point or another told me that they're feeling fatigued or they have to drink more coffee in a day. Like all of us battle it, both men and women. Now I'm not a medical expert and I'm not trying to give medical advice, but hone is, and they can help you with the entire process. Now there's a lot of misconceptions about testosterone. A lot of people think it just has to do with sex drive and it really doesn't. It has everything to do with your mood, your, stamina like your entire daily process from when you wake up to when you go to bed and if you're like me and at my age and you're starting to feel a little bit of a lag maybe it's time to take the test get home do the process send your samples in and they will have a medical professional reach out to you and go through the entire process if you need help they'll help you if you don't they'll tell you you don't so it's not like there's anything to lose in the situation at hand which is home all right, so we're just getting here in Benel, getting ready to cut a swamp cabbage. And right where I shot my buck last year, there's four nice hogs. They're not huge, but they're nice. Kelly and I are putting a slip up on them right now. I've got the 6.5 Creedmoor, and we're about to let it bark. When we get up here a little bit further, Kelly's gonna stop, and I'm gonna keep going on foot. Kelly's got the camera in position. I'm close enough to make the shot now though. They have no idea I'm walking across this pasture. The wind's perfect. Well, he seems happy, so I think he got it. I think I heard a little bit of a crash when the hogs went back into the woods. Well, let's go find him. Dalton, who's the manager of this ranch, he does guided hog hunts out here too, with thermal and normal daytime hunts. It's a blast, this place is so beautiful, and he almost always puts you on an animal. Even though right now we weren't hunting, Come over the hill and there was a hog so fingers crossed we got him you hear it hit him yeah i did i need to burn off them cookies i hate where's your shoes where's your shoes you guys she used to be a city girl but now she's <laughs> turning redneck never a city girl but you have made me more redneck <laughs> we had swamp cabbage on our mind now we're having swamp cabbage and pork hopefully Swine. Swine hopefully it was a long poke that was probably 200 plus yards 
I wasn't dead settled in on the crosshairs, I can assure you. But it sounded like a hit. Shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor should have done the trick. But the hog's not laying there, which means I'm going to have to trail it. Now we just got to find out where it was sitting. Look how nasty it is in here. Which way did it go? One hog went that way. I think it was standing right there. That's crazy it was. I think it went through here. If I was a betting man. Well, there's fresh mud right in here. All right, so we came right over there. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have high hopes if there's not already blood here because this is where it came through. Huh. There should definitely be blood right here. What happened? Uh, I think you missed. <laughs> Can we go cut a swamp cabbage now? I reckon, goodness gracious, we ain't gonna let you shoot anymore. Well, you ain't got to change it. Well, you gotta oh, get to change it. man. I'm actually 0 for 2 today because I missed a coyote earlier, but the coyote was about 600 yards. Even though the Creedmoor will shoot that far, still too far to hit it, you know, standing there with not a good rest. <laughs> the good thing is y'all get to make fun of me now in the comments. Hey, how about this? What would there's a good question. What would you do if you, someone brought you hunting over here? It was wet and boggy. You dropped them off and said, you know, if you shoot something, just holler at me. We'll drive the buggy and come get it. Oh, I would know you where do this that, is going. Or would you try to drive your truck in here and just? Tear, I was trying to be considerate and make ruts. Did you teach him that? I know you didn't teach him that. <laughs> Sometimes. Or what happened if, do you I, drive if a I would have missed this across a wet pasture? No. <laughs> what would happen? Hey, is this? beat me while i'm down so last year dalton put me in that tree right over there and i shot a nice buck and he said if you kill one wait for me and i'll come pick it up well i walked out and i'm like i don't need to wait on them it's perfectly dry driving through this pasture right here i buried that tundra sat there and thought about it i'm like well there's only one thing to do now and that's put it in four-wheel drive high put it in sport mode and floor it and i came out so whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> Ruts this deep. <laughs> Is it still there? Maybe we can go look at oh, it. Oh, they're still there. They're still there. Either. That's from somebody else. <laughs> All right, enough of making fun of me. We're going to go get a swamp cabbage. I don't even want to hear y'all making fun of me for missing. But can y'all smell that? Do you even know what it is? Y'all, that's swamp cabbage right there. Now, no, my mom is not here. No, we're not still in Benel. Yes, we have Joey VT fishing with us. Hi. Leave a comment below if he needs a haircut. I think he does. <laughs> I need a haircut. I'll, I'll comment myself, Gabe. I'll be the first one. <laughs> right here, y'all. Right here, right here. Watch this. On three. One, two, three. Smack your mama cornbread. I wouldn't smack my mom. I would definitely not smack mine. She, <laughs> she would punch me in the nose. She gets a twitch. <laughs> Anyhow, so this video is a little bit different. For the first time in like ever, the first half of this video, the hog hunt and us cutting the swamp cabbage wasn't yesterday. It was almost a month ago. 
in that video, Kelly and I came home and we got super busy and we just literally could not finish that video. We ended up somewhere else doing something else. I don't even know what, but yesterday and the day before, Jake and I went to a good buddy of mine's hunting lease and hunted for two days and we actually ended up cutting a bunch more swamp cabbage. Literally, we cut, I think, 12. And I really got to see in depth on how they pick the right tree and start trimming it from the top to the bottom and how they cut it. Then we left there and I came home and I cleaned it in the driveway. So when they cut one, cut all the branches off and then they start pulling the husk from the outside. So they get it neck down really is what I'm trying to say. So when I got home, I had the neck down version and I had to neck it down even more and then cut it up in little chunks, bring it in. I put it in a bowl like this, soaked it in water for three hours because it will turn brown super quick. Then I rendered down some bacon meaning I cooked the bacon then took it off and it's actually in this salad now. Once I had all the bacon grease in here, I added the cabbage. Almost every recipe I've ever seen people do with swamp cabbage, they add so much stuff in it, it's crazy. This is swamp cabbage, bacon grease, a half stick of butter, and some, y'all get ready for it. I haven't used that in a long time. I particularly, it's not that I don't like it, I just don't like that flavor, except for when I'm eating steaks and swamp cabbage and cornbread. I made the cornbread for Kelly because she will eat that. For all y'all who think she's a health freak, Joey, leave a comment below in like three days on this video and tell the fans how much cornbread Kelly ate. <laughs> y'all, in three days from the upload of this video, look for Joey's comment and he will tell you how much of that she I'm ate. Pretty sure, is cornbread gluten free? No, oh, no, let me see. It's homemade. I made it all myself. <laughs> Is it gluten free? No, I mean, it's, it's actually corn. stacked full of fat. <laughs> oh, wheat flour. No, it's not. Nope, it's not gluten free. <laughs> but it will go in my belly just like it. So anyhow, I wanted to make just plain swamp cabbage. Kelly makes the world's best broccoli just like this. She just puts it in her, she didn't do it with bacon grease, just olive oil. So that's it. I made these awesome steaks. Now it looks a little bit funny because I put a garlic butter sauce on top when I was done. It's just the three of us. Jake and I actually had a blast. He shot like a 300 pound boar hog with a 22 long rifle. Game, son. He's right there. Tag him. Boom. Jake. Yes. Look, look, oh, oh, give me here. If he gets up. Wrecked it. But it was too late to film it. Come over here and just show him the inside of the steak. Come on over here. Look at that. Now, one thing I've been trying to show you guys for the last two videos is my logo on my knife, but the glare is always wrong. Can you see it, Kelly? Yes. If you guys want, go to Danko.com and you can now get your logo or one of these Dankos with my logo on it engraved right into the side of it. Look at that, though. So you've never had any kind of swamp cabbage? Never, ever. First time. Did you pretty much, you pretty much grew up on the coast, right? Mm -hmm. Not hunting or anything. I didn't really hunt, no. When was the first time you ever went hunting? I went turkey hunting one time when I was, I think, 16 and I didn't shoot anything. But then the first first animal I killed was with you, with, uh, uh, was the boar. Yeah, thanks, buddy. What, do you, what are you doing over there, jumping the gun? Who do you think you are, Kelly Young? Mm. <laughs> I love swamp cabbage. <laughs> She's been picking at it for the past 30 minutes. All right, dig in. Try Swamp it. cabbage first. It kind of looks like potatoes. It literally, uh, this is the first time I've ever had it this way, and it's amazing. That's really good. And it's completely plain, not, not too much craziness. To be honest, I thought it was not going to be, first of all, the texture. The texture is way different than I thought it would be. The second of all, I didn't actually expect it to be as, as good as it is. Wow. That's really impressive, Gabriel. You did it again. Imagine that. <laughs> Next up to bat. Nothing negative about it. What about that it does steak? It tastes like potatoes. Oh, what about steak. that steak? The steak is so good, like falls apart good. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, and I'm I'm an honest guy. Mm. The best steak I ever had was cooked by Gabe. He picked we picked up a a, a for sale Win Dixie ribeye like in February when I came by, and the guy like. Puts it on the grill, goes to sleep, wakes up, goes out, flips it, brings it back. I was like, oh, I bet he burned it or something. Thing like melted in my mouth. I was like, how, how, how? I just don't, 
I don't no, get how this guy I've cooks so well. I've learned that from Blue Gabe too. Like he'll like leave the meat on the smoker like for hours, and I'm like, or in the crock pot for hours and hours and hours, and I'm like, well, doesn't that like dry out the meat? But apparently no, it makes it fall apart. Y'all want to know what's funny? What? Want to know a funny fact? What? I think I suck at cooking steaks. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Trevor Roberts, so who we were just hunting with this weekend, my good buddy Trevor, I love him to death. He made a steak this weekend, like life-changing good. So I'm not taking credit for being a good steak guy. Well, you should. This steak, I put it at 450 degrees for probably five minutes on each side. It's medium rare. Put some butter and garlic on the top, but that swamp cabbage is definitely good. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't claim to be a swamp cabbage expert either. It is in my family's history from like as far back as it can go. I had such a blast this weekend cutting swamp cabbage with those guys and with Dalton. Dalton is super knowledgeable too. If you have a lease or you know somebody who owns some land where you can go cut your own swamp cabbage, go do it. Don't go on public land and do it because it's not going to end well. If your neighbor's not very nice and they have a cabbage tree, you can go cut that one and blame it on the other neighbor. <laughs> but if you have somewhere where you can go do it or know somebody who will cut one for you, get it because that right there is definitely the best swamp cabbage I've ever ate because yeah, it's plain. Do you have more swamp cabbage? Yeah, there's a bunch more over there. I already ate all my swamp cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, so after the first time I had swamp cabbage, I went to the store and bought the heart of palm in a can. That's, that's what swamp cabbage is. And I tried it just to see the taste difference, and there's, like, it's not even comparable to taste. It's insane how different it is. This guy Gabe, he makes me do so much more work than I want to. The first started out as collars, which I cut out of every large fish I did, <laughs> all the group of snapper. Now I'm gonna be running around with a machete and a sawzall cutting in the back of my tree. yeah, cutting cutting people's palm trees down. <laughs> well, Can you imagine? Just random. The funny thing is, is that the beginning of our neighborhood, there's two cabbage trees that are getting bigger and bigger, and they're literally the size that you want to harvest for swamp cabbage. And it's so annoying because their palm fronds stick over the road and smack our boat and hit my rod. So if you live around me and you know where I live and you see two cabbage trees at the beginning of my neighborhood <laughs> sold off, it wasn't me. Well, probably me. <laughs> but back to this weekend, so I took Jake and it's so funny Jake is 11, he's my 11 year old son, and the people that came out to help us cut the swamp cabbage, they had four girls, and they were all around Jake's age and a little bit older, and then I had Jake. So Jake was the only boy, and it reminded me of me growing up, because all the girls, of course, they got a little click, and they've got their Polaris Ranger, and there's Jake, and I'm like, Jake, why don't you go ride with him? He's like, mm -mm, nope, nope. <laughs> But really, I think all of them wanted to hang out. They just couldn't like cross that barrier. And it was so fun to spend the weekend with Jake. Literally just Jake. Joey and Kelly actually filmed without me on here and I went there. I just needed a middle break and a tree stand and I did just that. And we're actually gonna go back Thursday and try to kill another deer. We got a new boat. We're going on new adventures. We're gonna take this boat to Venice, Louisiana, to North Carolina, to Jacksonville, to the Keys, everywhere. I'm not leaving the country though. I'm done leaving the country for a while. <laughs> that last trip to Mexico and dealing with COVID, nada. Blue Gobby staying in America. There's a ton of beautiful places to show you here. And I'm gonna try to show you as many as I can. Kelly, all of us, we're just going on adventures. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of what? Shake.